Hello and welcome. Welcome to my new series. At least I think it's a series. We're going to give it a try. And I'm calling it 20 minutes. So I'm going to try and, you know, compress everything into 20 minutes, maybe, kind of, if I can. You know, kind of maybe in any way. So today, we're only talking about two things. I'm going to talk about caftans and guacamole. I think that's a good combination, don't you? Anyway, so today it's caftans and guacamole. And I'm going to start with caftans, but don't, change, don't switch that dial because I'm giving you that guacamole recipe that you've all wanted me to give you. And I figure it's perfect now because isn't it tailgate season? So that when you go to a tailgater, which I think is a football game, and you open up the back of your car and you have a picnic, what is better than guacamole, right? Or you're watching the Super Bowl, guacamole. Or you're anything, guacamole. Anyway, today it's caftans and guacamole. Do I look frumpy? Google says I look frumpy. They say that if you're older and that if you wear a caftan, you look frumpy. Well, as I say, I don't think I look frumpy. But let me tell you the story of my caftans. Um, a few years ago, well, maybe it's not a few years ago, a while ago, I became very good friends with Elizabeth Kirkpatrick, who is also the vintage Contessa. Now, the vintage Contessa loves caftans, and she was always trying to convince me to wear caftans. I mean, she's got a whole closet just dedicated to caftans, and she looks fabulous in them. She's tall, she's skinny, uh, I think she's almost six feet tall. I mean, she's really, she's tall and skinny, so she can wear these things. But I would tell her, I'm short, I'm busty, I'm, I think that I'm overweight. Well, I'm not that overweight, but still I'd say, I can't wear a caftan, I'll look pregnant. I'll look too big in a caftan. I'm too short for a caftan. I'd go on and on, and I would not buy a caftan. And she'd say, you can do it. Look at this short person. How does she look in a caftan? I mean, we went back and forth. Then what happened was I was watching the rock star mom. Now, I think she's about my size. You know, she's, she's kind of short. I don't think of her as short, but she thinks of herself as short. And she was putting on a caftan. And she said, I wear them all the time. I've got this whole collection. And she would wear them because they were so comfortable. And I thought, you know, it is so hot during the summer. I couldn't find anything that would be comfortable. I'd wear, I started wearing linen, and I wouldn't care if the, it was wrinkled or not. I decided I need to be cool. Somehow, my, the pants I'd wear and the t-shirts, they just all felt too warm and too close. So I started wearing linen, and when Rockstar Mom said, and they're so cool, I thought, oh my goodness, I'm going to try wearing a caftan. So I went online, I bought a caftan, and I discovered all you need to wear is a bra and panties, and the air just kind of, you know, flows through you. I mean, I don't wear necklaces with them. I really wear just a bra and panties and a caftan. It felt so good. Not only did it feel good, I mean, the air, the movement, I looked halfway decent. It's so cool to wear a caftan. I put one on and my husband looked at me and he said, that is so cute. You look adorable in a caftan. Well, he didn't say caftan because he didn't know what I was wearing. But suddenly I looked at myself and I looked in the mirror and I thought, this looks so nice to be wandering around the house or doing things in a caftan. I suddenly put on lipstick and I put on a little blush or a little bronzer and just some mascara and I looked halfway decent. Now, I don't wear them out in public yet. I'm not that gutsy or comfortable, but I am comfortable wearing them in the house. You know, I could come in from being outside, put on a caftan, and I'm so comfortable. People sleep in caftans. People get beautiful, gorgeous caftans, and they go to, you know, very fancy events, and they look fabulous. So 
I'm here to tell you that you don't look frumpy. Even what, it doesn't matter what Google says. You do not look frumpy in caftans. You don't look pregnant in caftans. You don't look too busty in caftans. You don't look too anything. They're comfortable. They, and the prices are right. I mean, you can spend $25. You can spend $50. You can spend $12. Um, but they're just, think of them as being cool. Now, you could, talk, you could say they're moo-moos. You know what? I don't care if I'm wearing a moo-moo. If I'm comfortable and in the heat, I mean, I've even got air conditioning. So, I mean, I should be cool, but I'm never cool enough. But wearing a caftan, wearing something loose, it feels so good. And it's really fun searching around for them. They've got so many patterns. It's really a hoot. So I've been having a great time looking for them, buying them. And, you know, people talk about hauls. I don't know if you consider four a haul, but I've got four. And I'm now what am I going to do in the winter about caftans? I don't know if they have them heavy or not, but what I think I'm, I'm going to do, I can wear tights underneath these. I can wear um, long sleeve t-shirts underneath these. I can wear pajama bottoms underneath these. Um, I don't know about pajama tops, but you can wear, you know, uh, camisoles, stuff like that underneath it. I even think these would look fabulous with a long scarf. So I've got great ideas for wearing caftans and being comfortable and, actually, and wanting to look halfway decent. And I think that the caftans are a great way of look, looking halfway decent. I'm just in love with caftans. And to be honest, I haven't been able to stop buying them. It's guacamole time. I've been promising to give you this recipe for so long, and today is the day. Why? I don't know, but today's the day. So let me tell you a little bit about this recipe. First of all, you can see that I've made it a lot, uh, and the book is falling apart. Uh, this recipe is from The Cuisine of California from Diane Rosen Worthington, and I love all of her cookbooks. I mean, they're not brand new. You can see that they're old, but she's got some recipes that are really good. So one of them is her guacamole. Now, I've made some changes to it, and I'll tell you what my, the changes are. I'll also give you the recipe uh, down below in the show more. And one of it just this guacamole just tastes so good i'd call it the best guacamole in the world but i don't know if there's anything better so we're going to call it the second best guacamole in the world because my son has traveled around the world for school and wherever he is he would call me he'd take he'd take his he'd take a chair he'd put it on a table in his kitchen then he'd take the computer, put it on the chair, and he'd FaceTime me, and he'd have me watch him make guacamole because he was always having parties. So I've done FaceTime in Japan. I've done it in Evrea, Italy, New York City, and in Northern California. So I'd say it's a worldwide phenomenon, Diane's guacamole with changes by Sandy. So let's start. And I just sharpened this knife before I started cooking. And I keep a, whatever it's called, in the kitchen so I can sharpen my knives easily. Don't get one of those electric ones because those um, eat your knives. Next avocado. Now I chose these this morning because they were dark and they have just a little bit of give to them. Now maybe it would be better if if, um, oh, these are perfect. I am so impressed with my avocado choosing talents. It was just, a, it had a tiny bit of give. It wasn't real, real, real wipe, ripe. But this is, these are great. It calls for two avocados. Now, she says really ripe. You know what, though? These are perfect. Perfect. I mean, Martha Stewart would be proud of my 
avocado choosing abilities. So this calls for two tomatoes that are uh, peeled, seeded, and coarsely chopped. These aren't going to be peeled, they're not going to be seeded, they're going to be coarsely chopped. Um, it's just too fussy. So I just take two tomatoes, and this time this knife is really better. So, and I take out some of the, you know, the seeds. I can take them out this way so that it's not too goopy. And take out the, the, the stem. Okay. Okay, and then slice it. I like that this is serrated. Did you see that movie, Julia? What is it, Julie? Julie and Julia, with um, uh, what's it, Meryl Streep, where she's um, playing um, Julia Child, and where she has to learn how to chop, and she chops tons and tons and tons of onions, and she gets so good at it. But I love that scene, and she just goes chopping merrily along. Do I look like Julia Child? Okay, two tablespoons. I make it generous. Right? Okay. Now what else? Okay, this calls for a quarter teaspoon of ground cumin. Okay. And a teaspoon of salt. Now I use, let me see, I'm going to put, it calls for a teaspoon. I'm going to put a little bit less. Wait, I don't want to. And... Okay, I'm going to salt it afterwards. Okay, so I'm going to cut a lemon, squeeze a lemon. Okay, let's see if I've got a tablespoon. Oh, it looks like I do. Okay, so here's a tablespoon. Okay, and then it calls for a half of a tablespoon, but I'm going to wait and see if it needs more. Now, voila, I'm going to cut it with a knife so it doesn't get too mashed up, because I don't like too smooth guacamole. I like it to have a little bit of bite to it. So you see how this, this has some bite to it, as opposed to just mashed? Okay, now hold on, I'm going to get my chips. Delicioso. Mm. Enjoy. So I added that extra half tablespoon of lemon juice to the guacamole because I felt it needed a little brightening up and a tad little bit more salt. I'll leave that up to you, but it, it needs, you know, a bright flavor to it. And you also might try heating up the, the uh, chips in your toaster oven. That tastes delicious. And you also might serve it with jicama. A jicama is a, it's a bulbous plant, and you slice it and peel it, and it's got a delicious, almost sweet flavor and crispy. You know, if you're on a diet and you don't want to eat carrots and celery, eat jicama. Delicious. And let me know if you try out a half um, a caftan or not. I'd love to know what you think. And don't think of yourself being dowdy. Think of yourself as being comfortable and elegant. I mean, now when I go to get mail at the, ma uh, you know, at the mailbox and somebody sees me on the street, they're going to think, oh, what a chic lady. So give it a try. Let me know what you think. And I'll see you next time.